beginning in a comfortable seated position, upright, allowing the weight to rest just in front of the sitting bones here. And again, I have a whole video on proper seated posture if you'd like to watch that. Allow the shoulders to rest over the hips so the weight settles into this space. And you want to avoid slouching or fixing your posture by doing strange things with your back. Your back is upright, not overarched, but relaxed. So straight relatively from the outside. The head is comfortably balanced on top of the spine, the top of the head released and floating upward. The shoulders released, allowing the elbows to sink downward. Your legs just resting out in front of you at a comfortable angle. Usually you want your hips to be a little bit higher than your knees, and that helps with the softness in the lower back. And again, the thighs soft, the lower legs soft, the feet relaxed. Sitting quietly in an upright and balanced, released position. With every exhalation, allow the holding patterns in your body to release. Any space that is continually gripping or holding on to tension, any emotional tension or mental busyness, it all is released. Gentle exhalations through the mouth. And as you inhale, you allow that sense of stillness, calm, abiding, and presence to deepen. Exhaling, softening further. Inhaling, quieting further. And just take your time. With every breath, softening a bit more. Just five more minutes, allowing this settling through your body into the chair or into the ground. 
deepening your level of presence, being very gentle and quiet. Whatever you came into this practice with, the busyness from the day, simply leaving it behind, letting it go. You can pick it up again in five minutes if you want, but for now, put it aside. When your mind wanders away, simply bring it back. Only a few more comfortable, slow breaths, allowing your awareness to settle into the moment, your whole body to relax, your emotions to settle, become calm. When your mind wanders away, you simply relax and release that distraction. And let your mind come back into the present moment on its own. Hmm. And then when you're ready, warming up your hands. Remember that we only use warm hands on the body. So take as long as you need to get your hands nice and warm. And we... Begin by softening and opening the crown of the head. And again, just as a reminder for those of you who are joining us for the first time, 
I see that always that there's new people who come in and then leave, probably because they're confused. And check down below the video for links to introductory video sessions. That might be an easier way to begin than to try to jump in to what probably seems like a very strange massage set. <laughs> Why is he massaging the top of his head? How odd. Maintain softness in your shoulders, even more softness in your hands. As we continue through the set, we will slowly gain more and more skill and availability within our body. So after sitting, we become very soft and quiet inside. And as we practice, you want to maintain and even deepen that stillness and softness. We took the time to warm and soften the hands. And so you maintain that sense of softness in your hands. Don't start pressing with your fingers and tightening them up. Then we begin to gently rub the back of the head. Remember just the weight of the hand to allow the warmth and your intention to settle into that space just beneath the skin. You don't have to push hard. You're not trying to massage the bone. Warming and releasing that fascial layer. And then back of the neck, side of the neck, as well as that space just below cervical vertebra seven at the base of the neck. allowing your awareness to soak into that space between the skin and the muscle, which here we're calling the fascial membrane, but it's also all of those spaces in between everything. Just the weight of your hand is enough. It's also very important, especially for those of you who are beginning, to cultivate a sense of friendliness to your touch. Part of this practice is a loving touch, gentle kindness to ourselves. With every movement, you want to pay attention to how loving it's possible to be to ourselves if you were to touch an infant that you loved and just genuinely, genuinely and gently communicate that sense of presence and your kindness and your good intentions, what would that feel like? And then how do you apply that to yourself? And so that's part of this practice as well, is cultivating that capacity for kind and loving touch to yourself. It's a very powerful practice. allowing the warmth to soak into that space around and behind the eyes. Ironing off the eyes three times. Most of us tend to carry a large amount of tension around the eyes, behind the eyes. We allow that to soften, to let go.
softening that point just on the outside of the nose, allowing your awareness to sink into the tissues. See if you can feel the space deeper than just the surface of your skin. This is one way that we cultivate appropriately in these methods. We allow our awareness to begin to soak into the body as though the body is a sponge and the mind is a kind of fluid or liquid. Gently tracing a path from the nose to the scalp. Spreading and softening it open. With all of these movements, part of what we are doing is helping the body to release away from whatever tendency it has to grip. For the face, it tends to grip toward the center. And so as we create these circles, you want to emphasize the part of the circle that is helping to open and move in the opposite direction of that expression of tension. And so as you circle around the orbit of the eyes, just on the bony part around the eyes, emphasize the part of the circle that allows that to spread and soften open. Not pushing so hard that you're trapping the skin against the bone, but just enough to help soften and warm the space just beneath the skin. both directions. Most of these are 36 times in both directions. Feel free to do a greater or lesser number depending on what's comfortable for you. If you have an area that requires extra attention, please do take the time to help that space heal and soften open. Good morning, Dell. Nice to have you here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Dell, we have lots of people that look like they're joining us, but you're the only person that said anything. So we appreciate you here. Softening that space just between the eyebrows. And then releasing along the line of the eyebrow to the outside. Again, just enough pressure to sink below the skin. If you push too hard, you move right past the layer we're looking for. That gentle, loving intention soaking in with your awareness. Chi carries information, and so we want part of that information to be our good intentions. Softening that space on the temple, just between the end of the eyebrow and the end of the eye, and the outside of the bony ridge around the eye. Remember to keep your hands and your shoulders soft your breath easy, and your mind quiet. And then moving down to the corner of the jaw, just on top of the muscle, beneath the skin. OK, 
continuing to allow your awareness to soak into the body. This is an excellent practice for those people who have dif difficulty feeling the insides of their body. And this is just a small step past the surface. Eventually, you become aware of all of the various layers in your physical form. Great way to practice. That space just in front of the ear, where the ear connects to the head. Soft and gentle circles. Just fast enough to allow your tissues to relax. And then rubbing from that line in front of the jaw all the way up to that point in front of the ear. And you can allow one finger as well to stay and work behind the corner of the ear, moving up and down. Remember that as your hands move up and down, your shoulders stay soft, and you continue to have this comfortable softness and fold in the hips so that your spine can relax. So for the next movements, we will massage over the ears, continuing until there's a sense of warmth pouring into the ears. And then we'll massage around the rim of the ear until that's also nice and hot. And then we'll compress the ear 18 times lightly. And on the last compression, we can tap the fingers against the back of the head, allowing a, a sense like a drum in the head to wake up the hearing centers. helping the face to open away from its patterns of tension, not pushing too hard, just enough to aid circulation and to soften those layers beneath the skin.
softening the sides of the neck all the way down toward the base of the throat. All of these tissues, lines, sinews, veins and arteries, helping to relieve even the deep musculature benefits from this light touch. Tracing that line from back behind your ear all the way down. And then you can work toward the base of your neck, that space on top of the collarbones, these clavicles, and then as well just beneath them. To me, this feels really nice. And then all the way down to the navel. Yeah, and Del, I know you mentioned that you'd broken your clavicles as well, and so maybe spend extra time there in case there's adhesions or old injuries that are locked in that space. You want to be as soft and gentle as you can since there's perhaps trauma and fun lines of tissue damage there. And then closing when you're done, allowing everything to settle and sink down. Make sure that nothing is trapped up in your head or your neck and shoulders. Instead, let everything settle down into that space behind the navel in front of the spine. If you are not able to feel the inside of your body yet, in the very least, notice the sense of warmth against your navel. Allow your awareness to accumulate down there. This is a very important step in Qigong practice. waiting until a sense of stillness and deep settling occurs. Hmm. Ooh, over steeped. And Dell as well for the damage that's in this area. This whole shoulder complex that comes around through here, it only attaches in one place on the entire skeleton. And it's actually right here, this little bump at the end of the clavicle. Chromial clavicular, clavicular complex, sternoclavicular notch, notch in this area here. Sente. I know, <laughs> these wonderful names just describing locations. And all of this, the shoulder blade, it all floats over the ribs. They just kind of hang and float. And the only spot that they attach is right here. And so when this breaks, it tends to often freeze a lot of the possible movement through the shoulder. So we want to help release all of the adhesions in the work here. And it can be done roughly, but of course that has side effects that you have to overcome later. So it's better to be very gentle and to consistently open and soften through this area. And so for anybody watching this as well, if you have old damage to the clavicle or your shoulder is frozen for some reason that you're not sure about, often helping to soften these lines around the clavicles help to release the shoulder out, which is of course the direction we're moving next. And you always want to take the time that your body needs to release in the way that it needs. That's part of medicine understanding diagnostics and the appropriate treatment for each person. So as you soften all of this here, take the time to notice whether or not things are frozen in the center. A 
so glad that you got to join us today. Me too. <laughs> My goal is every day. Yeah, you're doing great. Busy lady. Softening beneath the arm as well. And then all of the musculature on top. Make sure that your, as your elbow comes up, your shoulder sinks down. You're softening the shoulder as the hand comes up. And if that's too difficult at this stage, then you can use the other hand to help lift this elbow as your fingers gently release. Remember that you're not trying to dig in here. This is not what we're doing. Find the line just beneath the skin on top of the musculature and let your awareness spread out through that zone, that relatively superficial layer. Find the empty space there. In Chinese medicine, we call it the zuo li. It's just describing a layer between things. And this is where we're working. And then the shoulder joint and the whole upper arm. Finding any spaces that require a bit more attention for you with this gentle, nourishing touch. And then the space in the fold of the elbow, the underside of the arm, just on the thumb side of the tendon that you feel there in the soft space. Releasing this point in the center. Gentle and soft. Today I'm using the base of my thumb, but some days it's lovely to use the palm to rotate with the fingers gently in the point. Find a sense of what is allowing that fascial layer to release more easily for you. Both directions. And then top of the arm, still at the bend of the elbow here, in the center of the muscle at the end of the crease. You can use your fingers to release that spot if you like. I'm just pointing so it's a little easier to see. You can place your palm there and rotate your palm gently. I'm going to use the base of my thumb still. Sometimes it's nice for these points to use the small knuckle on your hand. And it will change quite regularly. So check in with yourself and feel what it is that is working best to help you soften, to help you transmit that sense of loving presence into your body, to help this layer release. And then a little bit further down the arm, a couple tsun, two and three tsun down, which is just basically inches, maybe three centimeters down below the fold of the arm. Gentle circles. Especially if this is your primary arm, you may find that it requires a lot to help you release your forearms if you work with your hands. So please take the extra time to disentangle all of the tissue that gets bound up here. 
And then that space just between the tendons on the inside of the wrist, a couple inches up, as well as on the back of the wrist, usually just allowing your fingers to cir circle softly in those locations. You're not trying to sink in. Allow your awareness to sink in instead. Again, most of these are 36 times in both directions. But for instance, if you suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome or wrist pain, then maybe you want to double those numbers and just catch up with the class later. Take your time. Sometimes it takes a while for these things to begin to unravel and to soften, especially if there's trapped tension here. You can't force it to release. You can just ask and then provide the space within which it starts to release itself. That's the method for all of this. Then gently releasing here on the inside of the wrist, taking your time. And then we often like to release the base of the thumb. Many people develop pain patterns in through this area of the thumb. And so we just rub from a little bit above the wrist here, all the way up toward the thumb. For those of you who have been studying acupuncture or know these channels, we're engaging this lung seven point here as a way to help soften all of this space. Easing it open. And then the point here at the base of the thumb, right in that the center of that musculature there where your thumb comes in. Allowing a touch there. If you'd like, you can also touch a point on the opposite side of the hand that we studied in earlier classes. Gently releasing. Most of us carry lots of tension in our hands, and this entire set should help you continually soften and release that tension because we're continually touching ourselves with this very gentle intent. And yet places like this can often require a bit of extra help. And so definitely take your time here. And then gently gripping the base of each finger and sliding between the fingers, sliding off to the end of the fingers, helping circulation. Oh, sorry about my <laughs> Melanie joins us 
which is wonderful. And she brings her work with her. <laughs> Can't get her to leave it outside. And then moving to the other arm. Easing open the shoulder, collarbone, all of this softens through. And remember that all of these points, all of the points that we're working on the arm, we're including the intention for the points to spread open, the tissue to release, but also to lengthen toward the fingertips. Both sides of the arm, they all release outward for this particular layer that we are working on. Spreading open. Yeah, more and more softness through the armpits. Very good sign. And then tops of the shoulders release. Very soft hands. Notice this accumulation of softness in your body throughout the practice. Continually deepening that skill throughout the form. And again, softening the inside of the arm. This lung five point, easing that open. Releasing down toward the thumb, toward the palm, but also spreading out from around the elbow. If you can feel the patterns of tension and holding that you have in your body, you're easing away from that pattern. Slowly teaching your body that there's a different way to engage. And then the points at the base of the forearm, top of the forearm, or the elbow is, <laughs> and then a little bit down from that. And if one of these is a sweet spot for you, then please do spend extra time there.
center of the wrist on both sides, the inner and outer gates, Nei Guan, Wai Guan. Allowing your awareness to be drawn into the body. This is a somatic meditation. Allowing your awareness to become still and deep as you notice what's happening in the body. If you notice yourself being distracted instead, simply release the distraction and come back. Feel what's happening. And then outside of the wrist, just using your fingertips to gently release and relieve patterns of holding around the wrist here. as well as the base of the thumb, this whole area. So not just the joint itself, but a little bit above that area, maybe an inch and a half above the wrist crease on the top corner here of the arm. Do you know that point, lung seven up here? You can show me later. Okay, that's a good one. In this case, specifically to help relieve that Pain that may travel through the thumb. And then, right in the very center of the hand, as well as the outside. Large intestine four and small intestine three. Small intestine three on the outside of the hand here is also beneficial for the spine. So while you're here, you do want to, again, just check on your posture, make sure that your spine is through and upright, soft, relaxed, connected, settled into the right position on the chair. Crown of the head floats up because you soften the neck. You're not trying to push your head up. You release it up. And then, once again, gently releasing, helping to draw fluid and moisture, blood flow, chi flow all the way to the fingertips. And if you've been learning the six channels of the arms with us, please do take the chance just to run through them all out loud or in your head. It can be really useful as a way to remember them just to shout at the screen, <laughs> each of the various points. Don't disrupt your own relaxation. Just do take a chance to review the channels that you've learned. It's very helpful. Up the outside down the inside. And Del, if you remember any of the channels and you feel like writing down the 
six arm channels and the finger that they go to. Good practice for you and good practice for anybody who might be quietly reading in the background. always closing when you're finished. Letting everything settle and become still inside. Softening through. Softening your jaw, relaxing around your eyes, your neck, your shoulders, all the way down to your hands, your chest and upper back, your belly is released, your legs are soft, your feet are relaxed. Letting go. Bitter. <laughs> oh, do you want to hand it to me? I can fill it up. No, no, it's okay. It's just been steeping too long. The water was too hot when I put it on there. <laughs> For such a delicate tea. And Del, thank you for writing stuff. I can't read it from here, but I'll, I always will read them when I'm done. And then softening the sternum, emphasizing the downward direction for most of these. There's a sense of softening and opening away from the sternum as you release all the way from the base of the collarbone down to the end of the sternum. And then right in the solar plexus, in the center of the turtle here. <laughs> Easing that space open. This is a space that has a lot of emotional accumulation for a lot of people, especially this time of year. So being especially gentle and especially considerate and kind, a sense of unconditional friendliness, generosity of spirit, let that soak into this space as a way to counteract the poisons of aggression and anger and frustration and rage that can actually accumulate and store themselves here. People freeze in this area when they experience those. And that frozen nature can last a long time. So we've moved down now between the navel and the solar plexus. Gently warming this space.
and then we release the ribs. Now that we've made space here, space for the ribs to release forward and around, allowing your fingertips to gently drag through the spaces between the ribs. Not pressing hard, just enough so that the fingertips make contact with the layer of tissue beneath the skin. This time of year, again, the whole of the spring, which began yesterday on the Chinese calendar, this is a great time to spend the next few months taking extra practice time, extra space in your training schedule for releasing and relieving the ribs, soothing any aggression or frustration or anger that you find arising. Take the time to clean it out of your system. You don't need it. It's not helpful. Doesn't do anyone any good. As well as the space just beneath the ribs, easing forward here. And if you find that you're a person who tends toward anger or frustration, and that's just a place that your nervous system takes you regularly, then maybe spend twice as long here. Twice as long softening your jaw, the tops of your shoulders, working on the liver channel that we were talking about, the gallbladder channel that we discussed, easing these spaces open. Warming across the navel. Also circling around the navel, progressively larger and larger circles, eventually covering the entire abdominal space. You'll spiral out in one direction and then spiral back in in the opposite direction. You take your time. Again, allowing your awareness to soak into your body. This time, not just the level between the skin and the muscle, but also the layers around your internal organs, the viscera, all throughout your abdomen. It's as though your hands are shining a light into the space inside, and your awareness rotates around, healing, connecting, easing your breath, making space for your breath. You're not pushing and pulling on it. You simply make space and allow your breath to move naturally. Mm, feels good. And just take a moment, allowing your awareness to sink again inside that space, the middle dantian, 
behind your navel in front of your spine. Your whole body mind becoming soft and quiet. Softening that space here in the center of the inguinal groove. For the legs, all the way from the hips down, we emphasize releasing movement, traveling outward toward the toes. Similar with the arms, everything is softening through and down, including this area here. Just enough pressure to help relieve the tendency toward stagnation here. comfortably, soften the back. Make sure that you keep your shoulders, your hands and wrists comfortable. If you need to use the backs of your hands for this, that is perfectly okay. Softening that musculature alongside the spine, emphasizing the downward direction. side to side movement, you're emphasizing a movement that spreads away from the center as the musculature tends to grip toward the, the spine. So we're allowing this area to spread open, emphasizing that part of the practice. along the spine itself, mostly warming, softening the center of the spine. And again, because most people tend to spend their lives standing with their whole body compressing on top of this point in the center. We're doing the opposite of compressing toward it. Instead, we're softening away. And so the spine opens, the lower back opens away, and the tailbone that we work on as well softens downward, trying to help spread this area that is so often collapsed in a more helpful direction. And then just here, there's a line of musculature here that connects between the bone on the outside and the tailbone. And it tends to pull inward as well. And so we want, again, to emphasize the softening outward direction. as well as the center of the glute, this gallbladder 30 point that we were working on yesterday. To 
Just gently opening and releasing this area that tends to bind and clench. So today, for those of you that have been following this process of learning the 12 primary channels, the Chinese medicine channels in the body, we already worked through the six channels in the arms. Now we are on the last channel on the legs, which is pretty exciting. And this is the bladder channel, the urinary bladder channel, which is very long. It actually runs from up here where we were working before, <laughs> all of these lines that we were working on back of the neck that we were working on. It runs down the back to these points we were just working on, all the way down the tailbone that we were just working on, and continues down the backs of the legs, backs of the lower leg as well, sides of the feet, out to the little toe. And so that's where we're going today. And so we will emphasize those points as we work our way down the legs. The next point continues from here that we were working on yesterday, this gallbladder point. Just in the center of the leg, softening the point on the side of the thigh. Notice that my back is soft and straight. I'm not holding myself, I'm not crouching. You just allow your body weight to settle, your shoulders to release, fold your elbows a little bit rather than lifting your shoulders, and allow this space to release, softening open in both directions as usual. This is another wonderful point to release during this springtime. And then the point just above the kneecap, on the outside of the leg, just at the base of the quadriceps muscles here, a series of muscles, softening that point open. If I just use my fingertips, it looks like this. But I, in this moment, prefer to use my whole palm. Feels nice. But you should use whatever tool feels best for you that you help that helps you feel this sense of spreading warmth and comfort, sense of ease. As well as the point on the inside of the knee, same area just on the inside of the knee, on this section of the quadriceps muscles. You can also let your fingertips touch those liver points that we were working on last week. And then stomach 36, the top of the muscle next to the shin, just on the outside. If you'd like, you can warm and release that at the same time that you warm and release the spleen nine point that we were working on last week. Inside and outside at the same time. as well as the 
gallbladder 34 point, just a little above and to the outside of that point. softening open this area that binds. Some of you will find it difficult to reach lower on your legs, especially in this position. And so do feel free to try different postures and positions, but maintain this level of softness and comfort. Don't hold your breath. Don't hurt your back. Some people like to lay in bed and draw their legs toward them. I do find a way that works for you. I'm simply pivoting at this hip joint. I'm not using my back at all. My neck is staying long. I don't feel any pressure or, or tension in my back. What about under your feet? Do you feel like you're pressing against the ground? As I lean forward here a little bit, but I should still be able to move a little bit. Okay. But it's okay as long as you're not pressing back with your legs. Just the natural elasticity of your legs which should hold you up. Circling around the knees. Both directions. Feels nice. Especially if you have knee pain, working on these points and making these knee circles can be dramatically helpful. I would spend 10 or 15 minutes a day doing them after I first started healing my knees. So now let's move back to the bladder channel, the space just behind the knee in the fold of the knee. It's got a great name, the popliteal crease. Popliteal. Popliteal. That would be your wrapper name. Um, and then the space just between those two tendons in the back there. Allow your fingers to gently soak into that point, circling. This is urinary bladder 57. It's a wonderful sp spot for all different kinds of issues. Oh, excuse me, bladder 40. 57 is the one in the calf. Gentle circles, bladder 40. Am I getting my points mixed up? I think I'm getting my point numbers mixed up for some reason. Both directions, easing open the back of the knee. Let me know if you want me to do a Google. No, no, I think it's bladder 40. I had fun this morning deep diving into the Chinese names of various points and where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And so now it's got me all kerbuffled. <laughs> So softening open that point is wonderful for lower back pain, as well as the point that we're doing next, the center of the calf. And so if I was to trace down that bladder channel, remember it's running alongside my spine, through the tailbone here, down through the glutes, the base of the glute, back of the leg to that space behind the knee. And if I continue down, I also work with that point in the center of the calf muscle, the very top of the V of that muscle the bifurcation of the gastrocnemius. <laughs> Allowing the hip to open and soften. And again, if this is uncomfortable for you for any reason, simply find a different way to work on the point. You don't need to copy me. I just sit like this because it's easier to talk to the camera. So spend extra time here softening open this point I've gotten feedback from people that have been working with me over this past month on this practice series that this point has gotten less and less tender for them. And it's really wonderful feedback as the body opens. But we're not pushing too hard. We're just sinking into the tissues. Softening all the way down the Achilles. The outside line of the Achilles here is following that bladder channel that we're working on. But you also do want to soften the 
muscle next to the shin here, the anterior tibialis. Some of you might remember which channel runs down that muscle. This is just my way of helping you remember. And also this point here, just above the ankle bone, on the inside of that bone, the soft spot, allowing this whole area to become warm and soft. And then the bladder channel itself runs down the side of the foot. So from the back of the leg, it comes out, starts to wind itself around here to that space between the ankle bone and the Achilles. Down the side of your foot, all the way to the little toe. And so if you were to massage that channel, you could move it like this. So I'll do that here. Softening open that line. I can move and pull on the little toe a bit. We can work on that gallbladder point that I pointed out yesterday. But also, bottom of the foot, side of the foot, this liver point between these two tendons that we were talking a lot about last week. During this springtime, this liver point just between this first and second tendon here on the top of the foot, liver three, great rushing, tai chong, is wonderful for the springtime, for that sense of aggression or frustration or anger that often tends to happen. So you just want to allow that to release and be soft. And you can spend as long as you like easing these points open softening all the way to the toes, but especially the little toe. And so as a way to encourage you to do the memory tools, how does the little toe rest in your memory? What reminds you of the littlest toe? It's gonna to be different for everybody. And relate that somehow to the bladder. The image can be as wild as you want, if you feel like it's appropriate, you can put it into the chat box. <laughs> and then again, bladder 57 in the center of the calf, supporting the mountain. Warming and softening, easing open this line all the way down the Achilles to the heel. As well as that musculature along the shin. You can also soften your calf by gently grasping the musculature and helping to ease it away from the leg. It tends to get trapped and pulled upward toward the knee and toward the shin. And you soften it away, helping to release that line of tension, as well as warming spleen six, the lower leg. And again, for those of you that are recently joining us, remember that there's an introductory video down below and all of these classes that we've been teaching progressively are available over on Patreon. You're welcome to join us there if you want to watch the whole series. And then again, 
the bladder line running to the little toe. You can massage and warm that, pulling on the little toe, but also bottom of the foot and this liver point. Wonderful spots. <laughs> if you'd like to sit on the ground, you're certainly welcome to. You don't have to. Ah. <sighs> Sweeping all the way from your hips and lower back down, running outside, down the backs and outside of the leg, along the inside, upward, the inside in front of the leg. Perhaps you notice your fingertips trailing along that bladder channel on the back of the legs. Remember that where you're not gripping our thighs as we come forward, you're softening your legs in the opposite direction rather than pulling them in. And your spine also is softening over the top. And so you only reach as far as is comfortable, folding from the hip joint, not your back, not rounding your neck. You're not trying to get a stretch. If you find yourself stretching, you've gone too far. Softening, lengthening the tissues. That's what we're doing here. should feel just warm and peaceful and easy. <sighs> Circling your toes, your knees, that joint that you're sitting on. You can use your hands to help you rotate. So remember, your legs are soft. You can see how soft my legs are. I'm just letting them be part of the full body motion coming from up here. Circling the toes, using your toes a little bit to wake up your feet. Both directions. Turning your waist, not trying to twist your shoulders, not trying to turn your head. Instead, you're turning your navel so that your sternum, your navel, and your nose all move with each other, softening your back to achieve this, releasing your hips. And again, this may be difficult if you're sitting on the ground like me, so feel free to sit in a chair or to put something beneath you to get your hips off of the ground. You never want your knees to be higher than your hips. And then if you'd like, we'll do some lying down. I'm going to lie on my back. You're welcome to stay seated if that's more comfortable or for your environment. But we do want to take the time to release and soften through the body as much as possible. Lying on your back is especially good for this because we are, of course, focusing on the channel that runs down your back. And so making yourself nice and comfortable. Again, if you need to put something beneath your knees or something beneath your head, that is perfectly OK. Uh, 
And as much as you're able to, soften into the ground or the table or wherever you're lying, on the bed perhaps, and release your weight into what's holding you up. Most people, if I was there with you right now, most people, most of the time, I discover are either subtly or not so subtly holding themselves off of what they're lying on, to, on top of. And so what we want to do is to release our weight down. Just let it fall into the ground through your body. And in this case, opening and softening that ladder channel on the back, on the backs of the legs, the backs of the hips, the heels, back of the head. Softening long. We'll simply rest, allowing the breath to come naturally into your belly, the sides of your waist, your chest, your back. As your back softens, your lower back even begins to expand and soften. Just breathing naturally, not trying to control anything. Becoming soft. At some point when you feel ready, you're welcome to begin moving your hands and your feet a bit. Make sure that you have enough circulation in your body. And then at some point, you will sit up safely. For some people, that will look like rolling onto your side and into a seated position. But please do take your time. And if you'd like to simply stay lying down and drift off into sleep, you'd be welcome to. And then just take... 30 seconds to breathe, to allow your awareness to settle into that space behind your navel. And as well to include, along with that space, the area around you. So that you are becoming aware of the space you're in, as well as that quiet, warm place inside you. Staying grounded. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate you all. <laughs> Even those of you that are quiet and I don't know who you are, I still appreciate you. <laughs> and if any of you have questions, I know Dell has probably included a bunch in the chat, but if you are signed in, you can include questions. Please do feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer them.
I stick around for a little while. I have Mel to help me sift through them. Yeah, I might have to. Oh, do you have to head out? Do you want me to read them instead? Yeah, um, well, I'll read the first one. Thank you. So, um, and it's the one, the most recent one. And was there one, did you have a question or a, a comment that you wanted to make as well? No, I think so. Okay. No, not that I can recall. I didn't mean to just ignore you there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. So, um, all right. So Dell has a few questions here. I think they're all kind of like one question broken mm -hmm. out into pieces. So the gallbladder channel running from the ring toe question, what are the channels associated with the toe after the thumb? Parentheses pointer toe feels like middle finger toe though, and the middle finger toe. Uh, is that is that a question about which channels go to which toe? Um, yeah, it starts off specifically mentioning the gallbladder channel. Okay. And like asking for clarity around that one, running from the ring toe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's why it's it's fun to have funny images for each of these, so they become obvious. So the big toe on this side channel. On the inside of the big toe is the liver channel. That's why it's a little confusing because they both run to the big toe, the liver channel running up this side. The kidney channel on the bottom of the foot running up here. The gallbladder channel runs from that fourth toe, the ring toe you're talking about, running up the side of the body and the bladder channel on the little toe running up the back of the body. And you're right that that middle toe doesn't have a channel associated with it. And you'll probably notice it doesn't move very easily. And so some systems do have some channels moving to it and there are channels moving to it in the sense of what we call sinew channels and connecting channels and these kinds of things. Because there's, there's more chi flow in the body than simply these 12 primary channels. But as far as the 12 are concerned and the points connect with them, that's where they are. And so we skip that middle toe. So you're right to go, what happened to that one? Because we all do that. <laughs> um, and then you'll be happy to know that he did um, indicate which finger represents which channel in the chat. Nice so job. Very good. <laughs> um, and then the other question I see here is, I know the inside of the big toe, if you run a line up there on the side of the shin bone and a few centimeters outside of that, we have the spleen and liver channel. Up the inside of the shin bone? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, the spleen, the liver, and the kidney channel all run up the inside of the leg. All three of them meet at this point here, that spleen six point. Spleen six, it means three in crossing. And so the spleen follows up more or less this bone. The liver channel goes a little bit further back, and the kidney channel is a little bit further back even than that. But they all run up this line here. All the way up to the groin area is the next question. All the way up to the groin area. And then, of course, they spread out into the body as well. They don't just stop there, but we're just learning the, the legs. <laughs> There's a lot to learn. I don't want people to feel overwhelmed. As long as you learn the fingers and toes of the six primary channels, then that really starts to give you a sense of the flow in the body. And after this, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that flow and how to work with it. We have plans. Um, let's see. Um, the other question I see here is, uh, did you get the chance to read my comment about chess slash Chinese chess being a necessary part of internal martial arts? <laughs> I did. I've heard people say all different kinds of things. Um, not really necessarily as part of the internal martial arts but there is a lot of classic discussions about um, like what makes a good, a good well-rounded person in Chinese culture. And there's a lot of different lists from Confucius, um, Confucius to various other peoples. And there's a lot of various ideas. And so some of the more famous ones are, um, yeah, not, not usually, well, sometimes Chinese chess, usually it's Go, Wei Qi that they talk about. Um, it's or some kind of strategic game that cultivates that part of your mind. I actually first learned about it in a, a Buddhist uh, monastery center where I was at. Um, it's usually Chinese medicine. There's six of them usually, depending on who's doing the counting. Uh, Chinese medicine, uh, calligraphy or ink wash painting. Sometimes it's horseback riding and archery. Um, often it's something like Taiji practice. Um, 
yeah, there's there's a whole collection of them, <laughs> and it, it's different depending on who you're asking. And so it's it's fun that he is including that in his system because a lot of people think that's really important. Um, but yeah, it, it's different depending on which area you're in in China and who you ask. <laughs> but I do think it's very worthwhile to take the time. For some of them, it's um, the Guqin that I'm making those videos on Patreon about some kind of musical instrument. But traditionally, it's the Guqin. And what are the other ones? I'm forgetting some of the other ones. <laughs> but yeah, pretty interesting. And so Chris, oh my gosh, you made it. <laughs> I'm glad that you stopped by Big C. <laughs> we appreciate you. And I assume that's the end of the questions. I'll still read through all the comments, Del. Um, but looks like <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny the the guqin is I've been discovering that it really is a part of these internal practices. It's it, there's a whole Taoist system around learning to play it, which is why I'm learning to play it. And it's really interesting. It has a super ancient tradition. Um, and so, it's been fun to kind of be part of that one. It was almost lost, and only a few people brought it through the uh, all the communist, you know, mess that was happening in China when during the Cultural Revolution and the destruction to everything that was classical. They tried to get rid of all of the olds, and they they burned all of the classical instruments and all the music and all the texts, and very few things survived. And so we're really lucky that it came through. So I'm trying to learn it as fully as I can in order to continue that tradition forward. Because my instructor studied with a master who actually lives near Seattle, who hardly takes students, but who's just amazing. And so it's been fun to take part. I'm still just beginning, but it's it's interesting how it's already informed my touch and what I'm doing. I had to grow out some nails so I could play it which I'm also having to figure out how not to slash myself as I'm <laughs> doing these things and other people if I do body work, because traditionally my nails are very short, but pretty fun practice so far. <laughs> I actually have a, I sent a picture of that uh, Kung Fu Hustle guy playing the chin to my instructor and he, he looked at me the way that he does and didn't say anything <laughs> the way he does. He just gives me the look. And so I felt very happy about that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I appreciate all of you. Enjoy your practice. <laughs> I'm going to go make Mel some lunch. Hooray! <laughs>